Trump using the word Palestinian as a slur. Take a listen to the first time he used it as an attack during the presidential debate. But as far as Israel and, and Hamas, Israel's the one that wants to go. He said the only one that wants to keep going is Hamas. Actually, Israel is the one, and you should let him go and let him finish the job. He doesn't want to do it. He's become like a Palestinian, but they don't like him because he's a very bad Palestinian. He's a weak one. I've never heard so much foolishness. And here he is at a Friday rally. Let's watch. Take a look at that. Look at a guy like Senator Schumer. I've always known him. I've known him a long time. I come from New York. I knew Schumer. He's, he's become a Palestinian. He's a Palestinian now. Congratulations. He was very loyal to Israel and to Jewish people. He's Jewish, but he's become a Palestinian because they have a couple of more votes or something. Nobody's quite figured it out. Marks a sharp contrast from the way John McCain treated his presidential debate opponent back in 2008. Listen to McCain respond to this town hall attendee who says she can't trust Obama because he's, quote, an Arab. I can't trust Obama. I, I, I have read about him and he's not, he's not, he's a, um, he's an Arab. He is not. No, man. No, no, man. no, no man. No, ma'am. He's a, he's, a, he's a decent family man, citizen that I just happen to have disagreements with on, on fundamental issues. Joining us now to discuss is Sirius XM host Dean Obadala. Uh, Dean, are you a decent Arab? I think you can be both. And what John McCain there, there was at the time applauded. It was the right thing to do. What Donald Trump did by calling Joe Biden a Palestinian, then Chuck Schumer a Palestinian, is reducing ethnicity, which he despises already, Palestinians, uh, to a slur. And, and I make the case to my fellow Palestinian Americans, Joe Biden has not been good when it comes to Gaza and the Palestinians. His, his rhetoric changed over time. He tried to ultimately broker a ceasefire after getting pressure. For Donald Trump, uh, as president, he did everything he could to dehumanize us, to delegitimize claims. And if Netanyahu was there and wanted to do ethnic cleansing of Palestinians, the West Bank, then Trump would say fine to it if he were back in the White House. So, you know, him making Palestinians slur now, it's new. We, we haven't heard this before. It's kind of remarkable. And I hope it wakes up people in my community to just the, the existential threat that Donald Trump is to our, to our people and to our families who live in the West Bank and Gaza, East Jerusalem and elsewhere. Is he really making it a slur? It sounds to me like Trump was saying, was accusing Biden of being on the side of the Palestinians in the conflict with Israel, um, you know, using shorthand, saying he's, he's, uh, he's turned against Israel, he is he's too deferential to the Palestinian side of things. Now, you can obviously disagree with that analysis. I know um, sure. many people on the left think Joe Biden is so pro-Israel it's bordering on genocidal, but I think that's what Trump was saying. I don't know that I would say it was a slur. Well, maybe you speak Trump better than me, but what I heard was a man using the term of my ethnicity, my late father's ethnicity, as a slur. And that was the point of it. He didn't say he's now supporting the Palestinians or he's supporting the Palestinians more than Israel and Netanyahu. He said he's become a Palestinian. He said the same thing about Chuck Schumer. It's interesting, at the rally, the Trump crowd didn't cheer or boo when he said he's become a Palestinian. I think they were baffled by, well, what does that even mean? I think in time when Trump will do his best to define that. So at future rallies, when he says Palestinian, they will boo because they're the boogeyman. The same way Donald Trump demonized Barack Obama, it's not being from this country, then wanted to ban all Muslims from this country when he was running in 2016. It's a continuation. It's a holy war against people who are not white. Dean, when you say it's a continuation of what's already existed, the reality is American foreign policy has always been preferential to Israel. So why, mm. how is Trump a departure from anything that the Biden administration, the Trump administration, the Obama administration had done before? Well, there's a difference between policy and rhetoric, right? So in the case of policy, yes. Uh, for, for decades, the U.S. policy towards Israel has been siding with Israel generally over the Palestinians to the point of, of detrimental, where you're not fostering a two-state solution or any kind of peaceful solution going forward. I think things have changed with the Democratic base. We see that in polling. And, and I think that what Trump has done, though, it's not about policy. Policy, he was horrible. As president, he ended funding for the U.N. Relief Works Agency. He ended millions of dollars of funding 
to a Methodist hospital in East Jerusalem that provided complex medical care for Palestinians that they couldn't get in the West Bank. So he was literally killing Palestinians. He didn't care. Uh, in terms of policy, Trump was horrible. Gave go on heights. Israel moved the embassy, which is a minor thing to me in the big picture, but it was sort of symbolic of Donald Trump's commitment to anything that Netanyahu wanted to do. This is a different level. This is saying this ethnicity. What if Donald Trump had said he's acting like a black? He's becoming a a Jew. This would be there'd be a, a rightfully a backlash. There'd be screaming voices in the media saying, "What did you mean by that? That's racist. It's bigoted." But when it says he's becoming a Palestinian. That's what he said. He's becoming a Palestinian. Then it almost nothing. And so, you know, I'm thankful that you're covering it right now. You should get more coverage. You shouldn't. The dehumanization and devaluation of Palestinian lives has been long in our media. And there's just a vote earlier last week, Nayara, in the House to ban the State Department from even using the Gaza Health Ministry. Uh, their statistics on death toll and injuries in Gaza. The problem is they're the primary source. It's not like there's another source you can go to. So what they're doing is trying to, again, dehumanize Palestinian losses and say they don't even exist. And it's a remarkable time to see this happening. The Palestinians, according to polls that I can see, overwhelmingly support Hamas, support violent resistance and reprisals against Israel. So if it's a, if it's a dirty word, does that reflect that the overwhelming majority of the underlying population supports the kind of terrorist actions that have put them in this precarious situation. You mean like the six-year-old Hind who was killed in her car when she was driving with her family? Like that, was she pulled? Do you mean the Christians who were sheltering in a Gaza church who are relatives of Justin Amash, the former congressman? Were those Christians in that church pulled before they were slaughtered by the Israeli military? So I'd love to see the polling. Are they going 10 to 10? Are they asking, hey, I know you guys can't eat right now and you're starving to death because of the blockade. But who do you like in this conflict? That kind of stuff. The idea of saying your political views are are justify slaughtering women and children uh, is a level of callousness that, that we should never entertain in a civilized society. Uh, and unfortunately, you've seen some voices who are, are very pro Netanyahu who have said that. And, and I think it's it's unfortunate. Let, let's have let's talk about a two state solution going forward. And if you want to talk about radicals um, in the Israeli cabinet right now, there's Ben Gavir. He was adjudicated by an Israeli court in 2007 of terrorism against Arab Christians and Arab Muslims. Why are we doing anything with an administration that Netanyahu invited a literal terrorist into the administration? And where is the denunciation of a man who's actually a terrorist in there? And again, it's against Christians and Arabs. So people like Ben Gavir and Smotrich, this is a holy war against Christians and Muslims. And that's their view. We are all inferior to them. That's not the mainstream Israeli view. That's not the mainstream Jewish view by any stretch. But that's the type of people that Netanyahu has invited into his administration. What do you need to hear, Dean, from the Biden administration now that Trump has, in two successive days, used Palestinian as a derogatory label? Well, it would be nice if President Biden, in time, would have pushed back on it. Obviously, right now, there's a huge fire going on since the debate about his performance. But in time, and when he can, when there's opportunities, himself and other Democrats, we'd like to see other Democratic leaders, push back on that. The idea that there's something inherently uh, evil or bad about being Palestinian. It's the same mindset as like Hamas will demonize all Israelis and say, well, any of them, you can kill any of them, it doesn't matter. That's vile and despicable. So we can't have that. And I hope going forward that the voices and even some, a handful of Republicans perhaps would be nice about the humanity of Palestinians who are both Christian and Muslim living under occupation and oppression right now simply because of their faith, that I, I'd like to hear some, it should be bipartisan to be blunt. I know I'm being naive, but it should be bipartisan. You know, I thought it was interesting in the debate that neither Trump nor Biden seem to want to say very much about what's going on in Gaza. I and mean, it was one time where the moderators had to uh, press Trump to actually answer a question specifically about Israel when they'd asked about it. He, and he pivoted to Ukraine and they said, but what about Israel? He didn't really say very much specifically on it, even though it is a, it's a weak issue for Biden because some of the base, some progressives, some Arab Americans mm -hmm. are very upset about the administration's current policy. There's a lot of frustration. Trump has not signaled if he would do something differently exactly in which direction it would be different. It kind of just rhetorically I think wanting to say, yeah, Biden's screwing this up because he knows people are mad at Biden about it, but he's not going to commit to doing anything differently. So neither really wanted to talk about it and were pressed to do so. 
I agree with you 100 percent. I think neither one wants to engage on it. Donald Trump is sending out ambiguous signals. He's actually sending surrogates like his do- his, his father-in-law, who's Arab-American, to Michigan to meet with the Arab-American community there and Muslim Americans there, trying to entice them. So Trump is being intentionally ambiguous about it. He's saying like his track record was blindly pro-Israel and pro-Netanyahu in the first term. I think he's going to ride on that and knows enough not to step into this not to articulate some specific issue where you can, might lose some people are thinking supporting him. I will tell you overwhelmingly, the Arab and Muslim community, based on polling, is not going to support Trump. The question is, do they come off their couch and vote for Biden or not? But again, in 2020, 30% of Muslim Americans did vote for Trump. So there is a, a subset of the Muslim American community that will support Donald Trump for various reasons, probably not with foreign policy, but with tax cuts for the wealthy, things along those lines. And I think Biden didn't want to engage in it because, yes, he's stepping on minefields. He's trying to navigate a situation where he's trying to win back supporters while navigating a situation where they're a part of the Democratic base that is very pro-Netanyahu and part that is about more about being either pro-Palestinian or just in the middle. And I think the larger swath is just pro-humanity. that want to see both Israelis and Palestinians live in peace and that mothers of Palestinians and Israelis don't have to fear for their children when they go outside, whether they be killed by a militant or a missile. I think that's where most people come down. And I think the politicization of this conflict has made it much more difficult to get to that point. Well, to your point, Dean, more than just Muslim Americans and more than just Palestinians care about what's going on in Gaza, there is a broader humanitarian crisis that has brought forward a different electorate than what Biden or Trump are used to working with. Dean Abadallah, host of Sirius XM Progress, thank you for joining us today. We'll have more rising coming up. 